You can, uh, Oops, wrong button. You can contact me by phone, um, 218 209 7265. Can you give that to me again? Um, you can contact me by phone, 218 209 7265. You can also look uh, for me on, uh, message me on Facebook. It's uh, uh, Tito Ibarra, T I T O, and Ibarra, Y B A R R A. And uh, also, if you need to email me, it's it's uh, the Powwow Friends at Gmail. If you need to email me, but phone would be the best way. So. Let's say that uh, comedy can be used to kind of you know uh, reach into these I issues and like intervene in a constructive way. Well, um, my way of thinking, some of this stuff is so simple. Like it's so simple to me, you know, and 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 for and sometimes to. To uh, put it in a, in a in a manner that makes it seem so simple that people don't you know might not think about it. They they uh, they uh, make things too difficult sometimes. You know what I mean? Like it's not it's not it's not you don't need to be a scientist to know that what's going on is bad for the earth. You know, and that we need the earth and water uh, to to survive. You know, billionaires probably don't because they can always move someplace else. You know, but um. Spirits, I guess, you know, spirit, keeping spirits up, you know, that's where the, the, the humor comes comes in, you know what I mean? And, and also, if you can use, I, I've heard a comedian say that uh, that uh, co comedy is one of the last forms of freedom of speech. And if you can say, say stuff, you know, to where people are like, yeah, you know, I never thought of it like that. Both while laughing, it stops them from looking at the negative right away or, or getting, you know, Oh, I don't agree with that. You know what I mean? Or you know, you know what I mean? If you can get them to laugh, maybe they'll be like, "Oh, well, yeah, you know, it's 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 good energy." You know what I mean? Instead of, you know, everything is based on beliefs. You know, if you have a belief about something, then that's it. It stops there. It's like reading a cover. It's like thinking you know of what a book's about by reading the cover. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And uh, comedy can kind of show the irony of, uh, you know, we were talking about this this very artificial system where people are so alienated, and we can use humor to kind of just show kind of how crazy it is, and like, laugh at, at something that's so convoluted and implausible. It's a way to kind of get a little more power back from something so absurd, you know? Yeah, exactly, and like like I said, it, it's 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 not so, it's then, then if you can use humor, it's not so confrontational. It's not so so uh, easily debatable, you know what I mean? Like, people are always quick to debate and, and tell you how much they know about a subject, you know what I mean? Especially if you come at them in a, in a form where, it, like I said, it's confrontational. And, and it, but if you can laugh, it, you can get people thinking, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the, the They'll just, be like, dang, that's funny, but, you know, that, that was funny. You remember what he said? That was funny, you know? And, and, and they'll be thinking about it later. You know? yeah, like, there are parts of this that are... Um confrontational and parts of it like uh, people have stepped back at times from from using the phrase blockade there's nothing being blockaded here it was Robert who was saying yeah. that but we still have this hashtag RL blockade that maybe people are paying attention to but some things have been confrontational to raise raise the the temperature with Enbridge like putting in the in the the fence is that is that a, a funny way to to trigger something or no no of course not that's that's using their words they're using their their words. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna say against them, but you know. Um, Did you make that phone call? Is that like an authentic no, conversation make, with Enbridge? No, Enbridge? I didn't make the phone call. I don't. I, and I can't tell you who made the phone call, but. Um, but it's authentic, I believe. Yeah, it it is authentic, and uh, and yeah, it, and. But we've got one, only one, <laughs> one newspaper article written by mainstream media about this, this protest after 15, 16 days. What do you, what do you think has to happen? There will be more, and I think uh, we need more, more of uh, our people, our Red Lakers, to come on here to, because that's the big issue. Like I didn't know about this till about maybe four months ago. Like I said, when I helped, helped to organize that round dance near the border, never even heard of this, you know. And people need to get out of their comfort zone. You know, people need to get out of their comfort zone and, and not just be okay with everything. You know, not to just hear something and say, oh, well, it's being taken care of. You know, I don't need to challenge this information. I don't need to read into this anymore because I've been told by the government, I've been told by whoever, travel government, I've been told 
you know, that it's being taken care of. You know, you, you need to question things, you know, you, and get out of, in order to do that, you gotta, you gotta first think that it's okay to do that, to question, you know what I mean? And you gotta, and you gotta get out of your comfort zone, you know, gotta come out here, gotta, you know, gotta learn, you know. I mean, my reason, I, my reason, I didn't, I didn't really, I knew about like the I don't know more stuff and everything like that, but for me, the first reaction I got was, well, these people are Red Lakers, they need help, I'm gonna go. I'll find out what it's all about when I get there, you know, that's just automatic, you know what I mean? If Red Laker comes to me, wants help, and you know, now I'm learning a lot more, and, and uh, that's the way it should be, you know what I mean? Totally. And there's a, there's a also too, you know, you gotta, you gotta be able to, to have an open mind enough to, to, uh, to, uh, to believe that what's going on here is, is, is also part of, of like, like a spiritual awakening that's happening. You know what I mean? We have stories, we have, you know, uh, stories about, we have prophecies, you know, just like the Bible has prophecies, we have our own prophecies that talk about this, 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 everything that's happening right now. You know, so you have to be able to, to, uh, to have an open mind enough, you know, that there's not just one, you know, uh, one, not just one religion on this earth. Not just one story. Yeah, not just one story, you know. And I believe our stories are all very similar. They're just in different ways, you know. But you have to have an open mind enough to be able to think that, you know. So when I talk about spiritual spiritual awakening, for myself, there's a lot of things that happen here that that uh, I had feeling were going to happen. Like before this happened, I had like this urge inside of me to build a fire and go sit in the woods and just pray. I kept putting it off, kept putting it off. And I ended up here fire out in the woods you know praying yeah. you know wow. and uh that's not just uh that's not just by chance i don't think you know that's that's uh how is it, you know supposed to happen you know and so do you see people does this, do people seem to be waking up does it seem like they're that this is somehow kind of starting to roll things along i think so because this is not just the only place this is happening you know what i mean there's tons of things going on right now not just not just with the I don't know more movement in Canada, and and with natives, but this is spreading all over the all over the world. You know what I mean? So yeah, definitely. You know, definitely the, there's a there's a, a spiritual awakening happening. Happen. Yeah. I just want to ask, did any of you guys want to add anything about like what this kind of makes you feel? Like what you think is going on here? Do you want to add anything? Like I mean, I, I, I like the like the like what this the stuff with the, with all the Mayans, right? Mayan calendar, you know. That uh, right away, people want you to fear fear that, you know. And that's what we did. That's what a lot of people did. They feared end of the world's coming, you know. End of the world's coming. And of course, they had blaming on the Indians. No, I'm just kidding. But but uh, <laughs> the end of the, the end of the world's coming, right? So they want you to fear that. But there's there's also there's another side of that coin, you know. What I mean, a positive, optimistic. You know that that it's not it's the end of the world as we know it. People were saying, but that doesn't mean it has necessarily has to be a bad thing. You know, it could be a good thing. The world is changing. You know, and I think that's really really what's going on. You know, uh, the unknown. You know, the humor can just cut through fear. Sometimes, in those moments when you are so fearful, and then somebody like cracks that joke, and it's like a spell being broken. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, and those are just great moments. Those are some of my favorites. You know, and, and uh, like I said, I've only been doing this the last few years, but I've learned so much. You know, I've had to conquer my own fear. You know, fear of uh, ridicule, you know, bullying, stuff like that. Because it's, it's, I never really experienced it until I started doing this this comedy stuff. And, uh, and but yeah, there's, there's, uh, there's also, you know, politically correct, you know. You know how boring I'd be if I was politically correct? So I have to get over that fear, too, you know, that I'm going to offend somebody. Because you know what? You're going to offend somebody anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I can either do it the way people want me to do it, or I can be fearless and do it the way that I want to do it, you know? Because it would suck to be successful or, or to be successful on somebody else's terms, because you yeah. probably wouldn't be, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It would, it would, yeah. I, think it, I think it's just so cool that you, you know, brought such a positive spirit and helped put so much energy into this and really get this going. That's so. medicine, man. You know what I mean? I'm a medicine man. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not a medicine man, but <laughs> no, but you know it is. You know what they, what they, what do they say? What, yeah, what they say? Laughter is the best medicine. Yeah. You know what I mean, and at a time like this, you gotta, you gotta, you need that, you know, because there's so much anger. Trust me, I mean, I'm angry about a lot of the stuff that's going down too. So there's balance. You gotta get that balance, you know. Yeah. You need it, otherwise, you know, you end up in jail or something like that. You know what I mean? Like we've been joking about all the stuff that's been happening around here, you know. 
you have to joke about this stuff or it'll eat you up. People shooting fireworks at us and stuff like yeah. that. Well, if I'm, you know what, I'm gonna get mad, go chase that person, and then get myself in trouble, then end up in jail, and I'm, you know what I mean? No, best just to joke about it. Their ignorance, because that's what it is, because they don't know what's going on. All they know is that we're natives out here. That's all they know, you know, and that's that's the definition of ignorance, you know, not knowing what's going on, just hating something because you don't know what's going on, you know what I mean? You have no knowledge of the situation. Yeah, totally. Well, uh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for being here. Yeah, I'm glad I could make it. It's been yeah. really cool. Yeah, it is. So if we took Tom's advice and interviewed you. What, me? Yeah. Oh, God. What, what do you like about what this group has done so far? What do they need to do to be taken seriously by some of the press folks that you worked with? Um, it, it, it's hard to get things into the media, regardless of what the social issue is. And you have to, for one thing, you have to try to make it as easy as possible for journalists to try to, you know, like, you gotta, you gotta just keep hitting them with press releases, for example, over and over. Like, I've, I've tried twice to get this into city pages, and I don't get any response, you know? Because, uh, you know, I mean, frankly, it's very frustrating that the media industry of the white world, like, doesn't usually cover what happens to native people unless there's a disaster or a business deal. When the Mille Lacs tribe is doing some hotel thing, that made all the news. But the fact that all these folks have been out here for more than half a month, it's just, it, it, it hasn't, you know, been touched by the Star Tribune at all. Um, but, but I also know from having worked in the media industry that the, the economics are such that they, they don't have a lot of people. Like, they, so they don't have, they themselves in the media do not really have much of a budget to drive all the way out here and, you know, do segments. Like, if you were closer to town, maybe that would be easier. But, and that's why it's so important to, uh, and what I always try to suggest is that people have to try to make their own media. People have to uh, try to, you know, train each other and just kind of keep pushing that, that stuff out and building up. Uh, the availability of stuff like images that have no copyright and making sure that that's available, that people can take that stuff and, and remix it and just like, you know, keep pushing it. And, and I, I think that, uh, we, in my experience, we've been able to break through some pretty sort of thick blackouts just by doing that, you know, over and over and over and, and training more and more people to start, you know, telling their own stories. But it can, it can be done, but it, it is uh, very difficult and, um, uh, it, it, you know, requires fighting all these sort of structural issues of discrimination in the way everything is represented in our whole society. There so is a, right a, the a Minnesota Public Radio office in Bemidji, which is only 20, 25, 30 miles away, mm -hmm. uh, 60 mile round trip or, or less. What do you think it would take to get enough NPR listeners interested to cause Tom Roberts or Robertson or whatever to have to drive out here and and take this in. That's that's a good question. I, I have no idea like really how they end up setting their, their story priorities. I mean, I think that um, it so, you know sometimes it can take like a preponderance of things like blog posts and stuff to get an editor's attention. Like sometimes that helps. So if people can get out there and start pushing little snippets, not just on Facebook but out to the regular internet, like that that can help. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. Do you think the regulators and the, the bureaucrats and the politicians that are on top of the regulators are going to need to see media before they can shut down the pipeline? Uh, yeah, that, that can make a big difference for sure. I think um, they're, they're very reactive to, to where the media coverage is. It isn't necessarily what's actually going on in the world. It's just like what's sort of getting you know, news bounce. That, that's really where um, the sway of it is, I guess, a lot of the time. So. Um, and, it, and it, you know, it's tough because I, I really would have hoped that this would have had gotten at least a few more stories, you know, in like Duluth and and the you know the Star Tribune um, by like you know day ten or whatever, but it just hasn't quite yet. But I think um, I don't know. I just think we're gonna have to keep pushing. So yeah, just you know. So social media is important. Yeah. yeah. That's true, and and because um, even like native countries, today, they're pretty good about stuff like this, and they haven't caught onto it either. Yeah, you know. So and, and I know it's it's been it's for me it's been a long time I've been out here, but you know for the rest, like I say, you know nobody really knew knew about this this place, so it might take a little while, but it it'll get out there. Yeah, yeah, and it's just uh, well, media can be very regional in the first place. You know what I mean? So like mm -hmm. things in the Twin Cities tend to just like. The Twin Cities sort of looks at itself, you know what I mean? It doesn't even look to, like, even, like, the Minnesota River Valley, you know what I mean, is almost never in the news. Like, 
only just a little bit of stuff kind of like up north in that area in a very certain slant that's what tends to get focus but then out there like like lots of people for example are fighting frac sand mining like they actually won a really big victory a couple days ago um getting a huge frac sand uh mine shut down um through local pressure and um, that even that is very difficult to get in the news. The fact that like all of these sort of um, very grassroots people are sprinkled around out there, fighting against um, this the flips the basically getting the particles that they need to do fracking like, um, and uh, and that's just again something that the media does, doesn't you know have any real structural incentive to help along. The economics of it are such that they don't you know they don't feel like there's a benefit from making a big fight with anybody that has big money in a yeah, small community. Exactly, they, exactly, yeah. There's no percentage in it for them. Yeah. And then when and then you have different forms of sort of establishment non profit media like that get big grants from foundations and stuff. And those guys too, like, they're not exactly super aggressive either in the way that they look at news stories. And so you really gotta push hard against those guys too. Um, and uh, it's I don't know. It, it's a very, it's a very difficult thing that I've, you know, worked on a long time, and you know, but it's, it's great. It feels great when you can break through it, though. But it, it is very difficult, and it happens sort of randomly a lot of the time, just in like weird little fits and starts. So keep rolling dice, I yeah. guess. So if, if Aaron Rupar or one of the other media people down in the Twin Cities drove up here and covered the story, would they survive this? Would, would it be worth their while? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if they, you know, can find someone to borrow these, like, these wonderful coveralls from, they could do it. But, It'll be uh, fine, yeah. yeah. It's warm, nice and warm in here. Yeah, it is. That's why it's been a great place to do interviews, so I can get all numb. Where's your door? Anyway. I can tell you who won't yeah. be here. Fox News will never show up here, I bet you. Yeah, that is almost certainly true. <laughs> and it's, it's too bad. It's like, they just don't feel like driving out of Duluth, you know, but... <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. I gotta um, track my man down here and see. What but you're here. I, I and am you're here. here. And That's I'm, all that matters. I'm gonna push these clips up as soon as I can when I get home too. Right so on, I'm man. I'm really glad I got good interviews. Do you feel that uh, you know, yeah. regardless of how this uh, the encampment plays out, do you feel like you're gonna you know keep working on similar kinds of issues? Like you got some sort of momentum that you want to keep doing these uh, things? Uh, definitely, definitely. I, what uh, <laughs> what what I you know what. I, I, I think they are. I think uh, the Idle Men are actually woke a lot of people up to, you know, to things that are happening and, you know, just the injustices that are you know, going around. Cool. Um, I guess, uh, hmm. I guess my other question is like, do you have a particular sort of angle to this, like a certain kind of type of thing you've taken care of, care of at the camp, or, or sort of a, I don't know, an angle, I guess? Hi, Gary. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Well, I guess my phone doesn't. You have an official role. Yeah. You were also on one of the press releases as a press con contact, right? I don't know. Do you want people to? to contact you as someone who's an authority here, a responsible person here? Uh, yeah, I kind of <laughs> am. <laughs> I kind of am, I, you know, just, I mean, kind of, mm -hmm. you know, I'm kind of the one that sort of, you know, tried to find as many people as I could to get everything, you know, started and going, and, <laughs> you know, I'm not, so it's 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 really exciting. There was actually a point here where I I really felt like just giving up and going home and saying I can't do this. And at that time, all of a sudden I, I started to get like you know like messages on Facebook and things like you know thank you you know we're proud of you you know support and solidarity from you know like all over the place and it you know and I, you know when that helped like a lot you know when I you know and they're you know thanking me for doing this and helping them it's it's made me you know I day 18 I'm still here yeah I'm still here I'm not going anywhere so 